Okay, everyone, here is our second video on the scientific revolution. I'll give you some more information as we go through the unit and do your papers. I have not given you yet a copy of this PowerPoint, but it is in the barn. If you go under the folder scientific revolution, you'll see it says Sci Rev 2. And if you want to follow along there at home, you can open it and do so. And it'll pop up. So here we start. Um, on your left side, put any notes that you do not see on the screen that are not in the PowerPoint. Take notes on that. Now we've already discussed important figures like Galileo and Copernicus and Descartes and Bacon. Now we're going to talk about some other figures and ideas central to the scientific revolution. Now we've already spent some time discussing Isaac Newton. I know we've gone over some of his quotes. Um, this English scientist was known for his study of physics, optics. He was um, considered the inventor of calculus. And he studied things that he figured that the laws that govern the Earth, also, they govern their planets and outer space, that there's one set of principles. You know, if we understand the principles that, that Galileo came up with and that other people came up with, they all function under um, the same set of laws. So, for example, he, this is one of his theories of gravity, where F equals force, M is mass, R is the distance between the two masses. And this is just cool, right? It's the law of gravity. Um, so that is one of his probably most significant discoveries. That every object in the universe attracts every other object. And that that degree of attraction depends on the mass of the objects and the distance between them. So he wrote this along with other discoveries of his in um, his famous book. And this book um, is probably one of the most important books in the history of science. The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. He also expressed his deist ideas that God was like a big clockmaker and he set the clock in motion and there are therefore laws that we have to discover. And this book, what it did is though not everyone agreed with it right off the bat, it really sold the ideas of science. That once you experiment enough and conclude things enough, it's really hard to debate some things. Now other scientists would be Vesalius of Belgium. He was a physician and basically the founder of modern anatomy. One of the few books he published was on the structure of the human body in 1543. This was, you know, we talked about da Vinci dissecting bodies, but he really did that on his own. He did not publish his discoveries. This was something that was published. And he actually didn't draw most of the figures. He had an artist with him as he did his dissections. But it really um, changed the way people viewed the human body, how it functioned, um, actually viewing the body in a 3D space against the previous ideas of Aristotle. So there's Vesalius there with his beard. He was like a little scientific revolution hipster. He was. Um, I mean, wait, wait, go back. He not only had a beard, he had flowers on his shirt. It doesn't get any more scientific revolution hipster than that. Okay, moving on. Edward Jenner to the 1700s, excuse me. He was one of the first, well actually he was the first, to come up with vaccines and his one to prevent smallpox. Really he saved millions of lives over history. And the, um, he's considered the father of immunology, right, making people immune to certain diseases. Uh, he was from England um, and member of the Royal Society. Next we have Robert Boyle. Um, studied a lot in England, but was actually from Ireland. A real Renaissance man. He was a philosopher, a chemist, a physicist, an inventor, and a theologist. And definitely he was the world's first modern chemist. Yes, you're here. Oh, I'm recording. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you recording something? Are you telling yes. Me? Yes, you did. What are you recording? Your paper grades? No, a video for my class. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Using Pandora. Well, I was. Alright. Oh. oh, damn it, it's still recording. Okay, sorry for the interruption, but make sure you understand that Boyle, um, his view of atoms and molecules was new at the time, which was once again competing the theories of Aristotle, just like Newton and Copernicus did earlier. Can we just pause so, no. here? So here's the big deal, um, that this use of reasoning and logic in science was then used to analyze things later in society, which is what we're going to get to in the next um, unit when we learn about how they use this to govern um, 
politics, economics, psychology, all sorts of things. So last but not least, on your left side, below your notes, put a triangle and then summarize all of this information in one sentence, one sentence. And then below that, you want to write the password. And the password is marker. Yes, it is marker. I don't know why it is. All right, see you in class.